The following message was preached from the pulpit of Bible Baptist Church, Oak Harbor, Washington. Ezra chapter 3, looking at verse number 64. The Bible says the whole congregation together was 40 and 2,303 score, beside their servants and their maids, of whom there were 7,330 and seven, and there were among them 200 singing men and singing women. Their horses were 730 and six, their mules 240 and five, their camels 430 and five, their asses 6,720. And some of the chief of the fathers, when they came to the house of the Lord, which was at Jerusalem, offered freely for the house of God to set it up in his place. They gave after their ability unto the treasure of the work three score and one thousand drams of gold and five thousand pound of silver and one hundred priests garments. So the priests and the Levites and some of the people and the singers and the porters and the Nethanims dwelt in their cities and all Israel in their cities. Well this uh, passage here is part of a detail that gives information concerning the first expedition back to Jerusalem from the captivity. Uh, The captivity was something that had happened about 70 years earlier when the Babylonians came against Jerusalem. They destroyed the city and most of the inhabitants of Judah were either killed or carried off into captivity into Babylon. And those who've been studying through the book of Daniel will recall, of course, that After a period of time, the Babylonian Empire fell. It fell to the Medes and the Persians. And the book of Ezra, the events that are recorded here in these early chapters, occur in the Persian Empire. And God had stirred up King Cyrus, the first of the great Persian monarchs, uh, to put it into his heart to allow the Jews who were willing to go back. If you look back into chapter number 1, And verse number one, the Bible says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the man, men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem." And so we see that there was an expedition of, uh, as we read there, 42,360 men, Jews, who were led by Zerubbabel to go back specifically to rebuild the temple, the great temple of Solomon that had been utterly destroyed by the Babylonians. And uh, this passage that we've read here in chapter number two is part of the information that is given concerning those who went and uh, what they did as far as getting to uh, to the Holy Land. Now, I should point out that from Ezra chapter 2 and verse number 1 through to chapter 3 and verse number 7, that that portion of Scripture is repeated for us uh, in the book of Nehemiah. In fact, it's found in part of Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 5, that goes all the way through to uh, chapter 12 and verse 9. Let me explain to you what took place there and why... Uh, One part of one book in the Bible is also doubled up in another book of the Bible. Uh, If you turn to Nehemiah chapter 7, just the next book over, in Nehemiah chapter 7, the wall was built, of course, under the leadership of Nehemiah, and it was built in rather quick time as far as getting the wall completed around the city. Uh, In chapter 7, verse 1, now it came to pass when the wall was built. So this would be the same year that uh, that, uh, uh, Nehemiah had uh, gone to Jerusalem, 
The same year the wall was built and I had set up the doors and the porters and the singers and the Levites were appointed that I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. And I said unto them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. And while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them and appoint watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem everyone in his watch and everyone to be over against his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein and the houses were not builded. Then I want you to see what happened here is they had brought the rebuilding of the wall of the city to a a certain stage. In verse 5, And my God put it into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And here's the key, and I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. And then if you read on, you'll find that this is what is found in Ezra chapter 2. And if you'll go to verse number 70 of chapter 7, and some of the chief fathers gave unto the work, the Tershatha gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold, 50 basins, 530 priest garments, And some of the chief fathers gave to the treasure of the work 20,000 drams of gold, 2,000 and 200 pound of silver. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 drams of gold and 2,000 pounds of silver and threescore and seven priest garments. So the priests and the Levites and the porters and the singers and some of the people and the Nethanims and all Israel dwelt in their cities And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. And that actually begins where uh, uh, the book of Ezra uh, picks up the story of Ezra. But I just wanted to point that out because the five and a half chapter segment there at the end of the book of Nehemiah actually goes back many years to to Ezra chapter number one and two. Uh, And so uh, what we're seeing here is, is an account of this first expedition. And in verses 70 uh, through 72, the Bible records for us how people gave uh, to the work of the Lord. Actually, in in verse uh, uh, 68 through 69, there's 70 or 72 is in the book of Nehemiah. But in 68, uh, verse number 68, and some of the chief fathers, when they came to the house of the Lord, which is at Jerusalem, offered freely for the house of God to set it up in his place, they gave after their ability under the treasure of the work the, uh, three score and 1,000 drams of gold and so forth. So what we see here is how people gave to the work of the Lord. And uh, tonight I want to uh, speak about giving to the work of the Lord. Uh, we don't preach on giving very often um, here at this church. Uh, God has richly blessed our church with uh, sacrificial giving and uh, people who have given I would say uh, far beyond their means and we praise God for the way that he has not only provided for the church in general but through faith promise missions giving has provided and enabled us to do uh, great things uh, to be able to not only support other churches and help them in their sending of men but for ourselves to send men out and uh, we praise God for that Uh, even though we are the ones who give uh, we know we couldn't give if it wasn't for the Lord. And, and so tonight I do want to speak on the subject of giving to remind us of some, of some things that are found in the Bible and uh, just to kind of preface what is going to begin this week in our Faith Promise Missions Conference that will start on Wednesday night. Uh, it is important that uh, you do your very best to be here. I, I understand with employment and so forth it may not be possible, but as much as possible to come and sit under the preaching of the word of God because it is a faith promise offering we're going to take. And how do we get faith? How do we increase our faith? Well, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so the more that you can sit under the preaching from Brother Richards and Brother Smith and listen to their testimonies, listen to how God has used us to work through them, Uh, It will increase your faith. It will encourage you to trust God for more, to do more through you in this coming year. And uh, we have, as most of you know, on Sunday, next Sunday, uh, particularly Sunday morning, but it'll be open all day, is the receiving of our faith promise offering. Uh, Hopefully you've received a card 
uh, of this, a little uh, card that is folded, and uh, one part is to be, uh, you can tear that off, and, and uh, we certainly don't want anyone to put their name on this, and we would prefer it if you would hold this in your possession until the preaching is done on Sunday morning. Now, Brother Bill Richards is going to be preaching on Sunday morning, and at the conclusion of that message, uh, it'll be a time, if you haven't already done so, to fill out the amount that you're going to trust God by faith to give uh, over and above the tithe, uh, to give especially and specifically for uh, the preaching of the gospel. And then at the end of the meeting, uh, we will invite you to come here and to lay your cards here as an offering to the Lord. It's a symbolic gesture and it is not for anyone to know who gives or how much you give, but uh, it is certainly a, a special time. What we'll do after that is we'll gather up the cards, we'll tally up the amounts, and it will give us a, a good guide as to how we can expect uh, that offering to come in over the, uh, over the weeks uh, and the next uh, coming year. And uh, it enables us to plan. Can we help others? Can we do more ourselves? What is all of that going to need? And this is a, a way of indicating that. So I trust that you will uh, avail yourself of that. If you're new to faith promise giving, uh, I, I would just encourage you to do something. I, I've often told the story about this time every year of when we arrived 30 years ago uh, here on the 1st of November and the church uh, just a sh short uh, time afterwards was having the missions conference. And uh, not having lived in this country and not really knowing the value of money as relative to uh, to the cost of living and so forth, uh, I had no idea what to give for Faith Promise Missions. But we gave something. And uh, God showed himself uh, mighty and strong in that area and we we're able to increase it every year. And, uh, uh, and I just remember that uh, I had no idea. I didn't know if I put this amount in, if it would mean that uh, we would have to go without or our family or so forth. But, uh, you know, God never lets us down and, and uh, it really wasn't that much of a concern, I suppose, but it was a thought that crossed my mind. So if, you, if this is the first time for you to do that, uh, then I would encourage you just uh, pray about it, uh, listen to the preaching and see what God would lay upon your heart. Now, if you've been doing this for years, as most of you have, and, and, uh, and you're looking at that, then continue to give faithfully. Uh, because uh, it is being used for the work of the Lord. Well, I want to look at some things here in this chapter, in this portion, actually at the end of the chapter, on how God looks at the subject of giving. You know, uh, giving is a subject that's found throughout the Bible. In fact, giving is really an act of love when you think about it. The, the, the most well-known verse in the Bible, John 3.16, talks about giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave more than money. He gave us his precious son, Jesus Christ, who gave everything himself when he died on the cross. He laid down his life voluntarily uh, and he uh, paid in full the great debt that you and I have, our sin debt, which we could never pay. He took care of that for us and then he freely gives to us the gift of eternal life. I mean, you talk about giving in the plan of salvation, uh, then you're talking about God. But the Bible also talks a lot about money and really it is at the heart of love as we give, then God's work can go forth. So there's some things I want us to notice. First of all, I want you to see that God knows what we give. God knows what we give. Now, I find it interesting here that God actually mentions it. Yeah, in our church, uh, we have some policies in place to safeguard the money as it's received. Uh, we have different people counting it as opposed to uh, doing the bookkeeping and as opposed to writing the checks and that's just good accounting practice. But one of the policies we have in the church is that uh, uh, the pastors of the church, Brother Geist and myself, uh, we do not know who gives. Now you may have belonged to a church somewhere else at some time where uh, the preacher wanted to know who was giving. Uh, usually you could tell that because there'd be sermons on preaching every now and then uh, or maybe uh, a friendly m reminder. But we have a policy that it would be better for us as preachers not to know who gave because the temptation would be for those who are good givers, 
if we can put that in, in uh, use that expression, then we might uh, hold back on preaching about something in your life that needs to be changed because we don't want to offend you. Or if you're not a very good giver and we happen to know that, uh, we might be preaching and looking at you all the time, so to speak. So we just believe that it's a good, a wise thing that uh, we don't know what you are giving. And um, those that count and those that are count, they're the only ones that would have knowledge of that. And I can tell you, they don't sit there looking at the envelopes and saying, oh, I see brother so-and-so is... They, they just count the money and get on with it. And uh, Brother Ferris will tell you that. So having said all of that, though, it's interesting that God talks about those who gave. In other words, God will let you know that. Look here, uh, it says that um, some of the chief fathers, when they came to the house of the Lord, uh, which is at Jerusalem, offered freely. Uh, and then it talks about uh, others giving certain amounts and in the book of um, Nehemiah, it actually mentions uh, the different uh, ones that are giving. And God does know what you're giving. Um, and it's recorded. It's recorded. One of the things I find in the book of Nehemiah, where they have that great chapter about building the wall and how different people labored together and worked together on certain sections, and uh, in that names are recorded. God records the workers, but he also records the shirkers. And God, he, he takes a, a record of what we give. Uh, look over, if you will, into the Gospel of Luke for a moment, Luke chapter 21. This is an example uh, of uh, the Lord knowing how we give and uh, paying attention to it. Uh, it does matter to God how we give back to him. Luke 21, in verse number 1, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here in Jerusalem. And, and he looked up and saw, a, saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. Uh, now, how did the Bible know there were two mites? Well, he knew what she gave, all right? She, he knew the amount. And he said, of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast into the offerings of God, but she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had. So God here, we see through the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, uh, he knew what this woman gave, he knew what the rich people gave, and he knew which gifts were sacrificial, meaning uh, it cost them something, and that those gifts that were not sacrificial, uh, the Lord knew that. And he sees not only our heart, but he sees our hand. He records the tithe. Malachi chapter 3, in verse number 8, the Bible talks about bringing all the tithes into the storehouse, but it begins this way. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherewith, wherein have we robbed thee? in tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now when God said, you've robbed me, he was talking to the children of Israel and they said, well, wherein have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and offerings. Well, you, you know, if you're unfortunate to have your house burgled and somebody robs you and you want to fill out an insurance form, you've got to tell them what things are missing. Uh, you know that uh, when somebody is robbed, they know what they are robbed of. Well, God knew uh, what he was not receiving in the tithes and offerings that were not being given by the children of Israel. So he, re he, he sees the tithe. When you put that into the offering plate, maybe no one else sees the amounts written uh, except those few, but God knows what we give. And our offerings are recorded. Uh, we have that passage in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 38 where the Lord said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. And then the Bible says, For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Again, there's a measure that is noted when it comes to our giving. If you use a thimble to give to the Lord, 
then the blessings that'll come back will probably be thimble sized. If you use a big old shovel, uh, like a snow shovel, to give generously to the Lord, you know, the Bible says the liberal soul shall be made fat. And God blesses a, uh, a generous giver. But the point is that God knows what you give. And uh, not only that, but our faith is recorded. We have record of that in first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, the Bible begins in verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction... And the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, and yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And uh, so here uh, the Lord is, is taking notice of what these people in the church were, were doing. Chapter 9 and verse 10. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. God records those uh, acts of faith and trusting him. Our charity is recorded by God. Uh, Proverbs 19.17 says, He that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given he will pay him again. Well, in order for the Lord to repay, he must know what we have given. And so even our charity is recorded, and uh, God knows what we do for others. Our hospitality is recorded. Uh, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. We read that in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. And uh, the admonition is in 1 Timothy chapter 6 uh, for the preacher to charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, willing to excuse me, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. So God knows what we give and how we give to others. And he records our compassion when we give. Jesus said in Matthew 10 and verse 42, and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Just as the very hairs of our head are numbered, even the little acts of kindness in giving of ourselves or giving of our substance, God records, he takes notice of. And so knowing that God does record our giving should encourage us to be faithful givers. That, uh, you know, you may say, well, every week I put my offering in the offering plate and Well, I guess that's it. But listen, it's more to it than that. God knows what you just did. And God will reward you and bless you for that. We also see back in our text the recognition of giving. Back in uh, the book of Ezra, uh, this time again in chapter number 2, Ezra chapter 2, it's interesting that there's this word there in verse 68, and uh, it says, and some of the chief of the fathers when they came to the house of the Lord which was at Jerusalem offered freely for the house of God notice the Bible says some Uh, you see God sees the motive of our giving and uh, he recognized the selfish you may be a selfish giver you may say you know I need this money Uh, I I don't need to put it in the offering plate I need the money God knows that he he sees that and he recognizes it It's interesting that the Bible says that some gave. Not everybody gave, apparently. And uh, God recognizes uh, uh, that, uh, you know, what's in our heart when we give. Now, understand that recognition is not the motive for giving. None of us should be giving so that uh, others will look at us and say, wow, that person is just such a great giver. Uh, In fact, the Lord warns us about that. Matthew chapter 6, Matthew 6 And uh, verses 1 through 4, the Bible talks about how we should give. 
uh, in verse 1, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So here it's, it's quite evident that we are not to give uh, so that others would notice. Uh, that's the one time in our, in our meeting uh, when we don't have the orchestra blaring the trumpet. <laughs> that's a humorous joke, by the way. Uh, not about the trumpet player, but uh, uh, the fact is uh, we don't sound a horn. Look, at, and, and we've trained our, our wonderful ushers that when they pass the plate, they don't come out with a big, wow, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> All right? We try to not promote giving is what I'm trying to say I think you can understand that but you know God knows what we're giving all right whatever you however you may want to conceal it God knows what you what you gave uh, he recognizes covetous people he in the in the parable that the Lord told about the rich man who built his uh, tore down his barns to build greater and he said soul I have all of these he was very selfish God recognized that he said thou fool this night thy soul shall be required of thee God recognizes when we lie. And uh, Acts chapter 5 talks about a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And up until that point, there was nothing wrong with what they had done, but what they did was they lied and said, that's all we got for the price of our land and we're giving everything to the Lord. When actual fact, they'd kept back part for themselves. Even Peter, the, the preacher, he said, look, while it was yours, it's your money. But they lied and tried to give the impression that they were giving everything and, and that was not the case. The Bible talks about proving the sincerity of your love when it comes to giving. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 9, Paul admonishes that it's, it's a measure of sincerity and God knows the sincerity of our heart. But he also recognises the sacrificial. When people give sacrificially, and, and honestly, some of you have been doing that over the last several months, giving great sums of money to help with our South Pacific Baptist outreach. And, uh, and I appreciate that, but I'll tell you more, that God appreciates that, and he knows those of you who have been able and been blessed to be able to do that. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter uh, chapter number 7 and verse 70 it says and some of the chief fathers gave unto the work and then it says this the Tershatha that's just the name meaning the governor the Tershatha gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold 50 basins 530 priest garment that was a big sacrificial offering and God records that in his word to me, that's encouraging, and, uh, and, and God knows when you give sacrificially. Uh, it, it's a blessing because it, it shows your love for God more than anything else. God recognizes those who encourage through their giving. I think of Barnabas. Remember when the church in Jerusalem was going through difficult times? Many who'd been saved had probably lost their jobs, and there was a lot of suffering and and privation going on and those that had land sold it and one of those was Barnabas uh, Joseph Barnabas the uh, disciple surnamed him uh, Barnabas which means the son of consolation he was a great encouragement in his giving and uh, and honestly it's a it's a tremendous encouragement to God's work when uh, people give God recognizes the cheerful in, uh, in verse number 68 of, of the book of Ezra, I want you to notice how they gave. The Bible says uh, they gave, they offered freely. Uh, you know, this is a free will offering. This is not expected. The faith promise offering, you, you write a figure on that card next Sunday, uh, I'll guarantee that nobody's going to come to your home 
and knock on your door and say, well, we notice that you haven't been giving and we're here to collect. <laughs> the faith promise offering is between you and God. And, uh, and, and yet it is to be a free will offering. Uh, it's, it's something that you are led to do. And it's exciting when you do that, when you trust God, when you step out to have a part. But in verse 68, some of the chief fathers, when they came to the house of the Lord, which was at Jerusalem, offered freely for the house to set it up in his place. And uh, so there's a, the, the cheerful giver. Uh, we know that uh, verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. That's great. God loves it. And uh, then also the calculated giver. Uh, in uh, verse 69, they gave after their ability. And that's all God asked. He doesn't ask us to give, well, I guess the, the, uh, church in, uh, Mas- the churches of Macedonia gave beyond their ability, but... Uh, it goes on to talk about that if there first be a willing mind it is accepted to according that a man hath and not according to that he hath not and so uh, you know faith promise missions is not some rash act of irresponsibility Uh, in fact we say parents we encourage younger children to get involved but please check their card we don't want some child putting down they're going to give ten thousand dollars a week you're very generous in your allowances, if that's the case. But, um, you know, we, we, uh, the Bible says they, they gave after their ability. In other words, they took a calculated look at, at, at what God had given into their hands and of that which we earn or receive, we're stewards, we're to be good stewards, and uh, we, uh, we're commanded as, as breadwinners, as men, to take care of our families, uh, and to uh, provide for those things, we're to tithe and all of that, but then we can still give something extra to the Lord and uh, the calculated giver after their ability. So what we see is that God, uh, he, he knows what we give and how we give, and as we see here, it's recorded in many places. Well, lastly, what were the results of giving? And this is the exciting thing. What, what was the result? Well, the, uh, the Bible says in verse 70 here, so the priests and the Levites and some of the people and the singers and the porters and the Nethanims dwelt in their cities and all Israel in their cities. Now, if you read the whole story, there were three things that happened because people gave. Number one, God's place was built. The house of the Lord was built. That's exciting. Number two, God's priests were supplied. The garments were provided for the priests. Now, this is all Old Testament, we understand that, but, uh, you know, these are still principles that we find. And number three, God's people were blessed. They got to dwell in their cities. And when we give, we're going to see the work of God progress. We're going to see souls saved. We're going to see the, the kingdom of God built through the preaching of the gospel. And we're going to see not the priests, but we're going to see the preachers the evangelists taken care of so that they can do the work unhindered. That's a blessing. And then we'll get to enjoy all that God has done through our hands. So there are results in giving. It's not for the church. It's not for the preacher. Uh, It's not uh, anything that is selfish. It is all for the glory of God. And may I say one last thing, and that is that the basis for all Christian giving is the great gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the cross of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15, the Bible ends this section on giving by, with these words, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And there's one thing I can tell you, you'll never outgive God. And that's not just financially, but he has provided us through his grace the most wonderful gift of salvation. And we get to be in on that through our giving. The preceding message was preached from the pulpit of Bible Baptist Church, Oak Harbor, Washington. You can find additional information about the church and our publications ministry on the web at bbcoakharbor.org. For further assistance with specific questions, please feel free to give us a call at area code 360-675-8311. 
Thank you for listening. Our prayer is that you received a blessing from the preaching of God's word.